Dramal is a Minecraft survival adventure map created by Kiko and Baldrick all the way back in 2016. Its current version is primordial, but there's a new version called Apotheosis right around the corner. I'll keep the website linked up in the description, keep an eye out for that new version. It's stupidly easy to download, just click on the link in the description and scroll down a bit. You'll find out pretty soon why it's 3GB. You don't need any mods to play this map, though you do need Optifine, which you should probably already have if you're playing Minecraft on Java. This map really takes something different to the Minecraft map making table. Think of it as a typical custom survival map, but there's adventure elements like a storyline, lore, and items. Its current version is a far stretch from the first one. Primordial is 12,000 by 12,000 blocks. At the current version of the map, there's over 22 different biomes. It has handmade caves and randomly generated caves, 13 populated towns and cities, and over 400 unique structures. I won't be taking a look at the lore and the story for obvious reasons. As soon as you launch the map, you're teleported into a white and purple room. This is the colour theme that's going to stay pretty consistent throughout the whole map, and I actually don't mind it, it's pretty nice. There's also a cat. This room serves the purpose of giving you all the information you need to know, as well as letting you change a few features in the map. You're looking at a difficulty multiplayer right now, which adjusts the difficulty according to how many players you've got. There's a few more settings, but the only one I'd keep in mind is Keep Inventory. If you don't turn it on... Good luck, I guess. Here is the big wall of important information. Okay, maybe most of it is true. It's still very important, and I recommend you follow it to have the best experience. Once you've educated yourself about the map, and how to use it, and you've set up all your settings, you can now go up to this button and choose your clock. When you choose your class, you get given a pair of booties. As soon as you put on these boots, you'll get really cool abilities. Well, as cool as vanilla Minecraft can get. Don't worry if you don't like leather, you can upgrade these in the future. Let me show you what they do. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. I'm fast as fuck, boy. The first class, and my favorite class, has got to be the Rogue class. The Rogue class increases your movement speed by just a little bit. That is really handy if you're really fucking impatient like me. Not only that, but being as fast as you are, you can do a little bit more knockback to your enemies. And if you don't want to hit your enemies, you can run away with virtually no consequences. So if you like going fast, or you're just a scared piece of shit, this is the perfect class for you. Who the hell is Steve Jobs? The warrior class is raw and simple, just lets you hit faster, without that annoying bar at the bottom of your fucking screen that needs to be filled out. It's still there, but because of that faster attack speed that those boots give you, I guess you can do a little bit more damage over time. It's not my favorite class, but I did use it on my first playthrough, and I suppose it would be very useful if you were already pretty good at this game's combat. Stupid bastard, you've got no arms left! Yes I have! Look! Just a flesh wound. I'm sort of stuck between this one and the rogue class being my favorite class. That extra health can be really beneficial in those times of need. With this class, you can play like an absolute dumbass and still get away with it. In my opinion, this is probably just the best class to start off with and to just use in general. There's just something so gratifying about being able to walk off a building instead of just using the stairs. Capital Valley is in the center of the map. It's actually where you start your playthrough, if you choose to spawn there, of course. I'm not going to get in too much detail in this spot because I think this is an experience you should have for yourself if you're playing it for the first time. Here is a small rock hill that has nothing to do with the plot. Here is a church. It's a nice church. When you start, there's actually this little village that's just nearby the spawn point that I recommend you go to. It's a short walk, about 5 to 10 minutes. And once you arrive, you'll notice that the town is fucking chock a box of detail. Don't miss the trades, books, and signs you can read to help you out in your adventure. The God of Jamal? 
The Gulf of Jamal is a gulf. Thanks, Google. You'll find it if you head straight up north from Capitol Valley. Sadly though, I couldn't really find much about this area. Even the wiki has no idea. There, little to no information. Nonetheless though, this place looks really good. It's easily one of my favorite regions in the entire map. It has this swamp on the coastline on the western side. From there on, it splits into a bunch of different rivers, channels, and creeks. One of the first things you'll notice when you get here is the huge vastness of it. It's a house. I'm gonna go ahead and say, fuck it. So what, there's not a lot of stuff in this part of the map. It's fucking beautiful, and at least it's not Blackpool. Tell us something your mum doesn't know. Yeah. Oh. Palisades Heath is a heath. I am seriously learning more geography than I ever have in my entire life right now. Back on track though, Palisades Heath is further down south, just on the left side of the giant river that goes down to the bottom of the map. One of the main features of this region are fjords, which are these rock faces you're seeing that go into the water. Fjords are something you see a lot of in places like Norway. It actually has a bit of a Scandinavian feel to the area. It looks and feels cold, but it's not so cold that your nuts will drop off. It's got trees, but not too much trees. It's got grass, but not too much. And it's got mountains and hills, but not too much. It's one of the smaller regions in the map, and I kind of like it for that. I think if you're going to play this map, you should most definitely put this at the top of your list. Line it, boys, line it. There are a lot of regions in this map, more than any sane person is willing to do. I really love this map, but there's just such an insane amount of content in it that I'll go fucking insane if I try to cover it all. So I'm gonna cover it all, but a bit quicker. This will be my favorite region until the day I fucking croak it, mate. You see that little house there? That house on the tower? I live there. I own that house. This region is just a mixture of a mushroom and an autumn biome, and it goes together wonderfully. This is the best biome in the map, and if you say anything else... Kasai is an interesting place, to say the least. It's a sandy kind of canyon desert, but it has ice and snow on it as well. Now, if you're keeping up with the lore, you'll find it exactly why that is. But the combination of savannas, rivers, and huge canyons really make a nice landscape. And let's not forget about Athra, the nice desert village at the... At, at the... Mount Ebonfire is the second most big scary place on the map. It has this desolate, kind of fallout vibe that it gives off. A lot of the trees here are half dead and most of the ground is covered in ash. It's pretty bloody obvious that Mount Ebonfire is a volcano. But what is at the top of Mount Ebonfire? You'll just have to go there and find out yourself, I guess. This is the Ebony Velt. I assume it's based off of the real life Velt, which is the same thing, just without a T on the end. It's just south of Ebonfire, so you're gonna have to go through here at some point in your playthrough. You should be pleased to hear that, because by this point in the game, you might need a break. There's no big scary lava pits you can melt in, and no big massive drops that you can break your legs on. Speaking of broken legs, next up is Anir Najur. If you fall off any part of this map, you'll turn into a sand sandwich. As you can see right here, this is not your typical mesa biome. Its canyons are really deep. If your computer can handle the render distance, I highly recommend turning it all the way up for this area. You're kind of letting this place down if you don't do that. You'll also be letting me down. Oh, and there's also a rainbow desert. With rainbow sheep. I can't forget the rainbow desert, man. If you were a vanilla swamp, this is the guy that she tells you not to worry about. This is what happens when you let these guys build a fucking swamp. This is Shrek level swampage. Not only is the surface of the swamp dense and full of detail, the top of it is too. And you get lost pretty much instantly when you're in it.
Tharksax is split into two areas, north and south. If there was a word I'd use to describe this area, the last word I would use is plains. Why is it plains? Why? Most of what this region has are pretty dense forests and big steep cliffs. I suppose there are some plains in some sections, but not really in the north. The main attraction to this region is probably Tharksax City. In here you can find lots of unique trades you can't find anywhere else on the map. Including 64 nether stars for Dirt Prime. What does it even do? It does nothing! The Carmine is kind of a gross place. Its volcanic and bone-filled area makes you feel like you're going somewhere where you shouldn't really be. It gets worse and worse the further south you go into the biome, and that's because you're heading into the hell. The Hellcrags is the number one scary spot on the list, not just because of the obscene spawn rate of ghasts. It's a combination of a lot of things working with the dangerously abundant amount of diamonds near the lava. That's right, as you'd imagine this place being the scariest and the most dangerous has a lot of things you'd need, including a little boss battle and a lot of resources. If you're here for about 50 minutes, you'll find yourself with about half a stack or even a stack of diamonds, and maybe a broken keyboard. Loran Call is the final western region we're going to get into, and I saved best for last, don't worry this is my favourite one as well. Loran Call is a coastal region and it's scattered with these huge blue spires that go up to nearly 100 blocks tall. Just behind the coastline there's a huge rock face that runs along the whole region. On top of that rock there's a huge palm forest and underneath there's a massive cave with prismarine as a rock. Right up on the northeastern tip of this region there's a nice coastal village. Now that we have done the western regions, it's time for the eastern regions. The Black Jungle is a very dense volcanic jungle. It's located at the very southeastern side of the main island that the map is based on. And inside you'll find huge cracks with lava inside of them. Don't fall in them. I haven't fallen in them before. Never. Never would do such a thing. Just don't fall in them. I fell in one. In Miles Desolation, there's no trees, there's no plants, there's just cacti, and they're cacti, so they don't really count as plants because they want to fucking eat you. This place is scattered with little craters that you can go inside, and there's even some lava in a few of them. If you head west from your tower, there's a giant black crater that you should not go in. Don't go in there. Please don't go in there, I beg you. You haven't felt real regret. Just near Capital Valley lies the Heartwood. The Heartwood is the largest and densest forest in the entire map. It's basically this way better looking dark oak forest with these nice purple rocks up on the side of the mountains. This being the densest forest in the entire map though, you do not want to be here at night time. But if you're here during the right time of day and you have a decent computer, this place looks absolutely incredible. If I had a gun to my head, I would take a shit out in this exact spot. Purity Peaks is home to the ancient city of Selmavir. I hope I'm saying that right. It's called Purity Peaks because the hills are made of pure white stone. The rest of the region has tall trees and there's marshes scattered throughout of it. If you make your journey through the eastern coastline of the map, you'll run into Spearhead Forest. It's quite a nice walk up to the north if you're going up there for whatever reason. There's actually an eastern part and a western part of the region. Oh, what the fuck? How? On the western side of Spearhead Forest, there's a very dense section. And then on the east side, there's a coastline and a couple of islands are actually part of the forest. And over here, the forest is a bit thinner. Grand Pike Canyon's smaller size does not take away from its beauty. Just look at that. It's tucked up right up in the corner of the eastern mountain range. And while you're here, it really does feel like you're in an entirely different map.
Yeah, those are flowers. Akloromo is actually covered in these from top to bottom, pretty much. South from the tower, there's Dusps, also called the Painted City. I really hope you can tell why that is. The colourful landscape makes this place really nice to look at. It can be a bit of a shock when you first find this place, I know it was for me. Don't worry though, the flowers won't hurt you. I'm fairly sure the flowers will not hurt you. They're fine, really. The Rooked Plateau has a very pretty stone underneath the water, as you can see. There's not too much to offer here, and there's not that many structures around the area. I've been describing environments for way too long, and I'm kind of running out of stuff to say, but you kind of get the idea. It's got big waterfalls, big mountains, and big trees. It's a big biome. It's got a- Getting a bit colder now, we're heading into Highfall Tundra. 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 Right near the tower, you've got a small village simply just called Highfall. The water you're seeing surrounds Highfall and makes a lake just behind it. As you keep going north, you'll notice it's getting colder and there's a bit more snow. Quickly wrapping up the last two eastern regions, we have the Frozen Bite. And I just need to mention this, this tower looks so cool, it's, it's the coolest tower in the entire map. Pretty much the whole surface is covered in snow. Take your last look at some trees, because past this point of the map, there's pretty much none. Fairsile consists of mostly just big open snow plains. While you're here, you might see some cool looking giant roots popping out of the ground as well. Up north, you'll find some lava lakes. And on your eastern side, there's some frozen rivers with ice spikes. Mmm, monkey. There's three more regions in this map and they're all islands. The one you're looking at is called the Island of Dawn. And this one is the Island of Dusk. Both islands are geographically very similar, with one of the main differences being the Island of Dawn, which has crystals coming out of the ground, and the Island of Dusk, which is more orientated towards spirals and highlands. Both islands also have an abundance of mushrooms and mushroom cows. And the final region, Saad. Saad is a snowy, hilly cherry blossom island with pretty clear inspirations of Japanese origin. Pink. It has a pretty sizable town called New Saad, and has a pretty good looking forest to the east with a couple islands that look a bit similar. And there's a swamp. Fuck. I love swamps. Mm. Yes. Yes. 10 out of 10. Description. I remember as soon as I finished it with my friends and I, I wrote down this huge paragraph on the website that I got the map off of. I posted it as a comment on the website and Kiko actually responded to me and gave me a link to the Discord. And that's when I found out the new version, which is apparently going to be infinitely better, is just around the corner. If you enjoy the map, I highly suggest donating. These guys don't get paid to work and the map is completely free. Check the description for the link.